Hallelujah. Good morning, church. We want to start our service right now. Can I invite all of you to stand on your feet? Will you please turn to five others and say good morning? So happy to see you here today. Hallelujah, what a wonderful day. Let us just commit this service to the Lord this morning. Wherever you are, just want you to lift up your hands and let us look to the Lord in prayer right now. Father, we just want to thank you for bringing us here on Sunday morning. God, we pray for open heaven. We pray that you will come in a powerful way. That God, that you will touch every one of us. Lord, this morning we surrender to you our life, our heart. We make room for you. And we pray that your spirit will move mightily among us. Lord, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a big hand this morning. We give you all the praise. We give you all the worship. Hallelujah. Shines with hope and grace fills the sky. 
There's no one on earth that we desire beside you alone. So often, God, our heart and our mind and our strength, they grow weak. But Lord, we discover one truth that always will prevail. And that God, you are the strength of our heart. Lord, we want to love you. Even, even more, every day of our life, to know you, serve you, stay in your presence. That's all we desire. Where can I go? I can never run from you. Your presence is gone. Purify my heart, Lord. I hold on to you. You're the hope of my life. How can I ever hide from you? How can I ever hide? Can I go? I can never run from you. Your presence is gone. Purify my heart, Lord. I hold on to you. You're the hope of my life. How can I ever hide from you? How can I ever hide? Your presence is gone, pure. 
There is nothing on earth I desire beside you. God is the 
you believe that, give the Lord a big hand this morning. Amen. Amen. Come on, Sunday morning service. Let's give God the praise. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, that's right. Give Him the praise. Give Him the praise this morning. Amen. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgives? Who heals? Who redeems? Who beautifies? Who satisfies? So that our youth is renewed like the eagles. So Sunday morning service. This morning, let us worship the Lord. Let us sing praise to His name. Let gratitude fill our hearts. Let thanksgiving flow from these lips that we have for our Lord. For this day is holy unto the Lord. So therefore, Sunday morning service and all those of you watching by internet, do not be grieved and depressed. For the joy of the Lord is your strength and stronghold. Hallelujah. Amen. Now lift up your hands and sing a new song to the Lord. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. For the joy. Our strength, our fortress, our stronghold. 
that Father, no matter what we go through, we know that you are there with us and that is all that we need. So Father, we just commit this whole Sunday morning service into your loving hands. We just thank you in Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. Wherever you are, just give Jesus, just give our Father a big, big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. Before you're seated, help me turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad to see you here and be seated in the house of God. A big welcome to everyone who's joining us here on this Sunday morning, whether you're on site and online. I believe that this is the best place to be on any given Sunday. Before we proceed any further, we just want to welcome our new friends. If you're here to join us for the first or second time, we just want you to know that after the service, don't be too quick to leave because after you exit this hall on your left, you will find a green room, all right? And there you'll find a hot spot and there you'll find our friendly greeters and they are there to welcome you and tell you more about our church. And there also you will find that we want to bless you with a cup of handcrafted coffee to welcome you and also to fellowship and really spend some time with you. So if you're new here, don't be so quick to leave. Come and join us at the hall on your left just after this service. Right now, just want to prepare our hearts for an offering. So help me turn neighbor and say, it's offering time. That's right. Help me, let, just let me turn to the verse for today. Galatians chapter 6, verse 8 to verse 10. Alright? Let me read for you from the New Living Translation. It says there, those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that nature. And those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let us not get tired of doing what is good. For just at the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. Here, Paul is reminding us that as God's people, as a spirit-filled church, what should we do? It is a community of love where we do not just love the house of God, but we also express love to each other. And he reminds us that as spirit-filled believers, we cannot ignore the principle of sowing and reaping. That whatever we sow into the kingdom, we shall surely reap. Paul also acknowledges the fact that as we live in this world, we will face obstacles. But he tells us here, let us not get tired of doing what is good. Let us not get tired or get weary of doing what is good. Because in due season, that's right, in due season, we shall surely reap a great harvest. Amen? You know, just recently, two of my cell group leaders, you know, they've been going through a difficult time because we all know, you know, that the economy is not doing fantastically well. And as they work in an IT-related company, you know, there are many rumours out there about retrenchment. And true enough, you know, my cell group leader, Gwen, you know, she's working in an IT-related company. Um, just recently, she just heard the news that 90% of her department was let go and she was also retrenched. But she decided to hold on to God's promises because she knew that as she continued to confess and believe that God will continue to be faithful and somehow the blessing will come. Well, she still has not got her job yet, but God began to bless her in a very different way. Because her husband who also works in the IT-related company, just recently, five days after she got the news about retrenchment, he found out that he was awarded a special bonus. He was awarded six months bonus while all the other normal employees was only awarded two months. God can still be faithful even in a time of recession. Amen? That's right. Let's give Jesus a big hand. In the same way, let us not give up on our faith. Let us not grow weary or grow tired of doing what is good. Because in due season, as we continue to sow and give our best to Him, our God will be faithful and He will bless us. So church, are you ready to give? You know, right now, you know, you can follow the giving instructions. You can, today, you can join us by giving through cash, check or credit card. You are seated in, on your, right now, you are seated down. In front of your seats, you can scan the QR code or you can scan the QR codes that you see on the screens behind me as well. If you need an offering envelope, can you lift up your hands and the ushers will give you an offering envelope as well. That's right. 
Come, let us prepare our hearts and let us begin to pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to sow and to give our best into your kingdom. Father, we know, Father, that as we give, as we sow, as we do not get weary while doing good, we know that as we hold on to your promises, you are faithful and that the blessing will come. So Father, right now, we just give in faith and we're believing that as we sow in faith, we will reap in joy. We just thank you in Jesus' name and our God's people say, Amen. I just can help me pass the offering buckets down as well for the offering envelopes. If you see the offering em- uh, bucket, just pass it down right down to the end. Thank you so much for giving generously. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Right now, I just pass this time over to Lynn. Thank you, Pastor Edmund. Wow, wow, I love being in the house of God this morning. My heart is so full from the worship. And thank you, Pastor Edmund, for sharing wonderful, what a wonderful testimony about Gwen. Hi, church. Now, this morning, you know, we want to call out to all the parents out there. Where are all the parents here in this house? Yes, Harvest Kids and City Family are collaborating once again to bring you another family devotion night. It will happen on the 14th of June, Wednesday, 8 p.m. via Zoom. Now, I'm sure all of us parents will agree that building faith at home is so important, right? Yes, so we hope that you can join us on the 14th of June for a time of family worship, prayer and devotion. The Zoom link and devotion notes are available at our website, chc.org.sg slash devotion. You can also pick up a physical copy of the devotion notes at the Harvest Kids counters today. Now, City Family would really like to be there for all the parents in your parenting journey. To the end, we have prepared various workshops from June to August. Part one will start with five workshops. We will help you to explore your parenting style and how you can be a life coach to your child. We will also help you to identify your child's unique personality and emotional makeup. And of course, we will touch on the topic of discipline as well as practical ways on how we can build faith at home. We will end off part one with the fifth session covering social media literacy, privacy, and safety. Now, part two in August, we'll cover three workshops. We will discuss your relational health of your child. We will also talk about their sexual intelligence as well as gender attraction from the biblical standpoint. So we hope that you can all sign up as soon as you can. If you need more information, visit our website at chc.org.sg slash cfam. Do sign up first because there's limited seating capacity because we will be having these workshops on site right here in Suntech. Now, speaking of family, next weekend, we are celebrating Father's Day. Yes, we celebrate all you amazing dads out there. So if your father is not in service with us, please invite him to come and join us next weekend because we have something special in store for all the daddies next weekend during Father's Day. Now, next up, our church management board would like to inform all the executive members in this house that our upcoming annual general meeting will be held on the 27th of June, Tuesday, 8 p.m. right here in this hall. Food and fellowship will start at 7 p.m. Now, we want to highlight that the AGM will be held on a Tuesday instead of the usual Sunday. Ordinary members and ministry members, you are warmly invited to come and observe the proceedings with us. So we hope to see you on the 27th of June. Finally, we are launching our online Bible study classes once again. How many of you can agree with me? It's so important to get deeper in the Word of God, yes? So please register with us. It will start on the 28th of June over six Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Now, you will need to purchase your student workbook from the TRR bookstore. You can get it at your physical bookstore in Hall 605 or on their website at theinkroom.com.sg. If you are attending the CIC classes, your student workbook can be gotten free using a promo code. So the Zoom link and more information will be given to you upon registration. So sign up through your cell group leader or online at chc.org.sg slash Bible study. 
Now, in registration will close on the 25th of June. And if you need more information, you can email to bs at chc.org.sg. And that's all the announcements I have for you this morning. Let's welcome Pastor Jin Xian to share the word with us. Thank you, Pastor Lin. Amen. Can you please help me turn to your neighbours and tell them, let's get deeper into the Word. Amen. Amen. Hi, church. It is my privilege once again to be able to share the Word of God with you this morning. Shall we all look to the Lord in prayer? Amen. Hallelujah. That's why why don't we just pray in the spirit for a little while? Shigiri ala bagara bahata la gara la 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 la. That's why let's look to the Lord in prayer. Shigiri ala ba la 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 la. Release our prayer language here this morning. Shigiri ala ba la 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 la. Shigiri ala ba la 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 la. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you for your wonderful presence here in this place. Lord, we pray that even as we look into your word, God, come and speak to us as only you can. Lord, I pray, Lord, you don't just come and inspire us, but God, come and transform us by your word this morning in this service. So we thank you. We give you all of our praise. We give you all of our worship. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone say Amen. Amen. Thank you, Eugene. Amen. Two weeks ago, we celebrated Pentecost Sunday. Pastor Bob shared with us how we need to live a life in the Spirit. This morning, I want to continue in this flow of the Holy Spirit as we look into the Word. The title of my sermon today is Marked by His Presence. I remember when I came to church in 1992, I was only 16 years old. I remember how in every service, every cell group, it was always filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. This spiritual atmosphere impacted me greatly. In the very first service I attended, I thought there was something different in the atmosphere. I thought the church had installed a special aircon in the auditorium room that made the atmosphere different. When praise and worship started, the people around me started to jump. They started to sing wholeheartedly. And when it came to worship, they lifted their hands high in the air and they began to speak in a language that I have never heard before, praying fervently in tongues, just like what we did this morning. All around me, I saw and recognized a hunger, and a love for God. I thought to myself, if God is real, I want to know Him like the rest of them. Suddenly, I found myself overwhelmed by the presence of God. Right there, I encountered the Lord. His love and His presence flooded my being. Tears streamed down my face as we worshiped the Lord. And I felt the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit all around me for the first time in my life. From that day on, my life was completely changed. And that day, it was marked by the presence of God. To be marked means to be recognizable, to be identifiable, to be distinct, or to have a seal on our lives. Throughout the Bible, whether young or old, boy or girl, man or woman, rich or poor, educated or uneducated, we see how God encountered people and their lives were totally transformed. Out of the encounter, their lives were forever marked by His presence. In our church, we say this way. We say, just one touch from heaven will change our lives. Can you help me turn to your neighbors and tell them, say, just one touch from heaven will change your life. Amen. (laughs) Let's look into the Word of God this morning. In the Old Testament, we see Moses and the Israelites marked by his presence. Moses was a man marked by the presence of God. 
out of his burning bush encounter in Exodus chapter 3. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. God parted the Red Sea through the staff in his hand. And they overcame the mighty Pharaoh and his army. Moses knew what set him and the people apart was the presence of God. Therefore, if God would not move, the people should not move. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 15, it says, Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord replied in verse 14 and verse 17. He says this, The Lord replied, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked. The word presence in Hebrew is the word panim, which means face. This speaks of intimacy. In order to see someone's face constantly, you must be near enough. You need to be in a relationship with the person. Moses did not just want the people to know the greatness of God through signs and wonders, but he wanted the people to know the closeness of God and to know Him intimately. He knew that it was the presence of God that distinguished them from all the rest of the nations. Therefore, when we come to Exodus chapter 40, the tabernacle was built. And from that day on, the presence of God came and dwelt in the midst of them. Exodus chapter 40, verse 36 to verse 38, it says, In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, and they did not set, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day and fire in the cloud by night in the sight of all the Israelites during all their travels. In all their days, the Israelites were marked by the presence of God. As they walked in the ways of God, God gave them victory everywhere they went. What about in the New Testament? Number two, the early disciples, they were marked by His presence. In His opening, Luke, the historian, writes in the book of Acts, how the Holy Spirit empowered the disciples to be witnesses of His presence and His power. And they went about to preach the gospel. Scholars have named this book the, the Acts of the Apostles. But really, if you take a look at the book, it really contains the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to verse 5 says, And being assembled together with them, He commanded them to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. You shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Jesus continues to tell the disciples, but you shall receive power. Somebody shout power. power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So we see the Holy Spirit moving through the book of Acts. First, in Jerusalem to the Jews, from Acts chapter 1 to chapter 6. Then in Judea and Samaria to the Gentiles, in Acts chapter 6 to chapter 9. And then to the ends of the earth, from Acts chapter 9 to Acts chapter 28. We see how the gospel is preached with God's presence and power. And it went throughout the entire Roman Empire, where we read, about the gospel being preached in the cities like Galatia, Corinth, Ephesus, Asia, and ultimately coming back to the city of Rome. And the gospel continues to be preached 
all around the world. If you believe that, let's give the Lord, the Lord, the Lord a big hand. Amen. Hallelujah. The gospel is being preached all around the world today. But before all these, the early disciples encountered God in a powerful way. Remember to this time, the disciples themselves, the disciples who, walk, who walked with Jesus, they have not encountered God in this manner that they are going to encounter. As they gathered and waited in the upper room, Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 4 tells us, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Somebody shout, one place, one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Acts chapter 2, verse 2, tells us in the Pentecost narrative that there was a sound of a rushing mighty wind where they could hear. In verse 3 and verse 4, it tells us there was a fire. Somebody shout fire. fire. There was a fire. There was a warmth of the Holy Spirit they could feel. In the Amplified Version, the disciples were described to be diffused throughout their being. The Holy Spirit came upon them, poured out freely, and it spread all over the disciples. They could feel the power of God all over them. The power of God spread freely and was felt throughout the entire upper room. As they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke in a new heavenly language. The disciples experienced God's tangible presence and power. From that day onwards, the disciples were transformed. Their hearts filled with fire and power. The love of God so overwhelmed them that they carried a boldness and a godly confidence never seen before. Because everywhere they went, the presence and the power of God went with them. It was present to heal. It was present to save. And it was present to deliver. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The disciples were so full of the Holy Spirit that others took note of their transformation. They saw it was as if they were totally different persons. Acts chapter 4 verse 13 to verse 14, it says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. Peter and John were arrested after healing the lame man. The lame man there was begging outside the temple by the gate called Beautiful. And Peter now addresses the rulers and the religious elders. They saw not only his bonus, but they saw that they had been with Jesus. And how the power of God worked through their lives because the lame man that was begging outside the temple was suddenly standing right next to them. They saw how Peter and John carried the undeniable presence and power of God. For Peter, the day of Pentecost became a defining moment for him. Being filled with the Holy Spirit radically changed his life. Peter, the disciple who denied Jesus in front of the Jews, now is preaching Jesus to the Jews. Though he was an uneducated, ordinary fisherman, God used him mightily. For some of us this morning, we may feel like Peter. We feel inadequate. We feel not confident. We feel that we are ordinary. But you know what? When the Holy Spirit came upon Peter, it marked his life by his presence. His life was totally changed, totally transformed, and God used him in a mighty way. Likewise, God can use us mightily when the Holy Spirit 
comes upon us. If you believe that, let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. In 1906, there was an African-American lady by the name of Lucy Farrell. Lucy was born into a life of slavery. Though she was discriminated, sidelined, and left uneducated, Lucy encountered the Lord in one of the services she attended. That day, her life was completely changed. Like Peter, Lucy's life was marked by the presence of God. Lucy became the first African-American person to be recorded as speaking in tongues after being baptized in the Holy Spirit. It is recorded that because of the baptism in the Spirit, she was able to supernaturally speak in the cruel language, an African tribal language from Liberia. Lucy would travel to West Africa and preach the gospel in the cruel language as the tribal people got saved and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Lucy was instrumental in the early foundations of Pentecostalism during the Azusa Street Revival in 1906. Lucy was later known as the mother of Pentecostalism. That one encounter in that service marked Lucy for the rest of her life. That one encounter in that service changed the entire course of Lucy's life. Let's give the Lord a big hand, shall we? Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Moses and the Israelites, they were marked by his presence. The early disciples were marked by his presence. From a temporal dwelling place in the tabernacle, now God gave us a indwelling, a permanent indwelling of His presence. That day, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit became the seal upon the disciples. Therefore, which leads me to point number three. The church is marked by His presence. As the body of Christ, God wants the church to be filled with His presence. The distinguishing mark in the church is not only the cross, but the power of the cross. It is in the presence of God that we can find God's presence, God's power. And it is in the people that we can find the presence of God. How many of us can remember our church mission statement? I, I got the VC team to help us to put it on the LED board. Shall we all read it together at the count of three? Right? One, two, three. To build a church with a strong spiritual atmosphere of faith and purity where every member is released into ministry, discipled in the great commandment, to obey the great commission and the cultural mandate. You know, one of the most important parts of our church mission statement is to build a strong spiritual atmosphere of faith and purity. Somebody say amen. Amen. A strong spiritual atmosphere of faith and purity. An atmosphere where the Holy Spirit can freely move in our midst. Where people can encounter God. An atmosphere where hardened hearts melt. When sick bodies are healed. When broken lives are restored for the glory of God. In the past two weeks, we have been praying for at least an hour every day in SOT. Before we start our lessons, God has been stirring us up in school, in our spirit, to pray once again. You know, one of the distinctives of SOT is to teach our students how to live a life in the spirit. And part of it is to pray strong in the spirit. So every morning, Coming to SOT is like coming to a spiritual gym. You're coming for a spiritual workout. We get the students to pray loud in tongues. We get them to sing loud. We get them to lift up their hands until their hands start to shake. They, we get them to kneel down in worship. We teach them how to do spiritual warfare. And we teach them how to wait and to tarry in the presence of God. 
Each day as we prayed, the spiritual atmosphere in the school, the school grew stronger. The presence of God in the place grew thicker. The spirit man of all the students grew stronger. And out of all these meetings, all these prayer times and prayer meetings, there are many wonderful testimonies. Many encountered the Lord in a deep, deep way. Without a single laying on of the hands, some of the students were set free from oppression. They received their healing as they encountered the Holy Spirit in the spiritual atmosphere of faith and purity. If you believe that, let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. So how? How do we keep building a strong spiritual atmosphere in our lives and in our church? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26, it tells us, What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built. The Bible tells us everything is done so that the church may be built up. That's why we praise the way that we praise. That's why we worship the way that we worship. You know, earlier this morning, Pastor Main came out and gave us a word. A word to encourage us, to build us up. That's why we love and we respond to the word the way that we do. We say yes and amen. That's why we pray the way that we, pray, that we do. We learn how to pray and wait upon the Lord quietly. But at the same time, we learn how to engage in the Spirit and we learn to do spiritual warfare and we pray loud and strong from our spirit. We live our lives set apart for the Lord the way that we do because we want to live in purity before the Lord. The pioneers of our church understood this in their encounters with the Lord. The spiritual atmosphere that we have right now is a gift that God has given to us. Let's continue to build it. Let's continue to treasure it. Because this is a gift that God has given to us so that we can pass down from generation to generation to generation. If you believe that, let's give the Lord a big hand. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why if you want to clap, let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. So that God can continue to move freely in our lives in the lives of anyone that will step into our church. This is our Pentecostal distinctive, a strong spiritual atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. Just this week, I received a testimony from one of our international students. Her name is Kate, and she's in SOT this year from Team 5. She wrote and she says this, Dear Pastor, first of all, I want to thank the Lord for training us to be prayer warriors in SOT. Our spiritual stamina really improved. <laughs> Many of us encountered God in a deep way when we prayed every morning. Out of these encounters, they enabled us to minister to the people in Philippines on our mission trip last week. In our first meeting, we took what we learned in SOT and prayed fervently in the Spirit as we prepared ourselves to minister to the church leaders. The people were so hungry for a touch of God. On this trip, we prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come upon the entire church. All the leaders we prayed for were filled with the Holy Spirit. Many of them broke down in tears as they spoke in tongues for the first time in their lives. Some of them experienced heavenly joy and burst out in laughter as the presence of God filled the entire room that we were in. Many of them fell under the power of God as the Holy Spirit moved mightily. In our last service with them, the church members were also filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues. Suddenly, there was a shift in the spiritual atmosphere in the church. Something changed in the church that day. At the end of the service, we saw the leaders and members hugging one another in tears. What we didn't know before the mission trip was this, that the church was actually divided. 
Later, we hear how the leaders and the members were actually bitter against one another. They held on to grudges. And they were all thinking of quitting the church. But that day, the love of God set them free from all the anger, all the bitterness, all the strife, and brought healing and reconciliation to the church. Hallelujah. Amen. And the next day, we had a children's outreach in the village. Many of the children lived in poverty and they were hungry. Not just physically, but spiritually. And in that meeting, we fed the kids. We played games with them and ministered to them with the love of God. Many of them were visibly touched by the love and the power of God that they did, they did not want to let us go. Thank you, SOT, for teaching us how to pray and to build a spiritual atmosphere. It is amazing to see how the Holy Spirit brought healing and restoration to so many people as they experienced God in this mission trip. Praise the Lord. Shall we just give the Lord a big hand? Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know, June is the month of our Emerge Youth Camp. I say it one more time. June is the month of our Emerge Youth Camp. How many Emerge Youths do we have in this place? Can I see your hands? Well, okay, all of you are here. And some of you are here. One more time. I know we have done this in previous services. At the count of three, will you shout out your camp name, all right? One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Wow, 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 wow. I can hear all you, I can hear you all the way from the back. <laughs> you know, just last weekend, we had our first Emerge Youth Camp entitled School of Proteges. Many of our youths, they came and they had so much fun with the games. During the sessions, Many experience deliverance. Many experience emotional healing. Most of, the, most of all, many of them had a life-changing encounter with God. One of the testimonies that came from the campus said this, that we had this camper that was going through personal and family issues at home. To the surprise of the pastoral staff overseeing the camp, the parents of the youth came and said, at the back of the hall to attend one of the meetings. During the night meeting, a cell group leader, through the Holy Spirit, gave a word of knowledge to the troubled youth. Every detail in the word was spot on. The youth broke down in tears as she was deeply ministered by the Lord. Now, unknowingly, the parents who were sitting at the back of the hall, they too heard the word. They were shocked. They were shocked and they were touched by the accuracy of the word. They knew that God was moving in the family. The parents themselves, as they sat there at the back, they too were touched by the Lord. After the session, the father posted and shared this online. Only in the presence of God can there be such healing of such magnitude. I know God is in my life. The realness of God couldn't be any more real as he reminded me of his goodness, the victories, and the various encounters I had. Encounters that I had long forgotten, buried, and I did. But in just one session, everything came flooding back. In that session, not only was the youth touched and ministered, but God began to stir up the heart of the parent. All the encounters, he says, they were long forgotten, buried, and are dead. Everything came flooding back. The month of June is not just a month of image camps. The month of June is a month where the Holy Spirit wants to pour out His Spirit. Not just upon the youth, but also upon the adults. And all the adults say, Amen. Amen. 
So from the Old Testament to the New Testament to our present day, God's people have always been marked by the presence of God. Many of us, we have grown up in church, we have benefited from the sacrifices of our pioneers. Our lives have been transformed by the encounters with God in this house. Pastor Kong and Son and many of our pastors and leaders, the pioneers, they paid a huge price to, to build this church. They have given the best years of their lives. Many of them did not grow up in Christian families. But all they had was a heart to love God wholeheartedly, to serve and to love people fervently. They learned how to pray. They learned how to build this spiritual atmosphere that we have today. City Harvest Church, this morning, whether we are young or we are old, let's continue to build the house of God. Let's continue to build this spiritual atmosphere that we have here in this place for generations to come. If you believe that, let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. What makes our church different? It's not our clever planning, not our style, not the venue, not even the stage design, even though the designs are very nice. But it is different because we have a deep love for His presence. It is different because we are willing to pray and to seek His face. It is different when we learn to build a spiritual atmosphere, walking in faith, walking in purity. It is different because we are willing to live for Christ and to hunger for more of Him. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and verse 20. Jesus said to the disciples, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed His word by the signs that accompanied it. As the church, Jesus now calls us to go out and preach the gospel. Jesus calls us to move in His presence and His power because we are forever marked by His presence, filled with His love, filled with His power, so that the lost are saved, the sick are healed, the oppressed are set free, and broken families that come into this place, they are restored. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So what the Holy Spirit did in the book of Acts is still relevant to us in our generation. God is still moving. He is moving in our SOT. He is moving in our mission trips. He is moving in our emerge camps. And certainly, He's moving in our midst this morning. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we all stand on our feet this morning? City Harvest Church. Let's build strong spiritual atmosphere of faith and purity where the Holy Spirit can come. He can come and move freely where signs, wonders, miracles, they take place where the glory of the Lord can come here. Amen. So whether you are emerged youth, whether you are a young adult or perhaps you are an older adult, let's decide today let there be a longing. Let there be a new hunger. A cry for more of the Holy Spirit. It's not just among the youths. Now we are a bit older. But don't forget, we were, young, we were once young. We were once youths just like them. Wanting for more of God. Hunger, hungering for more of Him. So this morning, will you just lift up your hands here in this place? Why don't we just begin to release our prayer language here in church this morning? That's right. Let it be a cry this morning from your spirit. Let it be a cry from your heart. Sunday morning service. Whether you're young or you're old, man or woman, boy or girl, 
Let's cry for more of the Holy Spirit this morning. The atmosphere is changing, I feel it in my bones. Something good is happening, the power is As I lift my hands to worship, as I lift my hands to worship, touch me with your presence again. Touch me with your presence again. Saturate this place. Saturate this place. Holy Spirit, fill the air, breathe. Sometimes as adults, we jokingly say this. We say, we let the youth emerge. The adults, we can submerge. But adults, it is our kids that are going to the camps. They are our next generation. It is their time to encounter God and be transformed. It is their time to experience healing, deliverance, and to have Holy Spirit encounters. Now, Adults, it's not the time for us to submerge. Now it's the time for us to pray for them, to intercede for them, 
so that they will encounter God, so that they can have their lives marked by the presence of God. Amen. So today, I want us to sing the chorus of this Emerge worship song that is written by one of our youths. This is a song that represents a cry for the Holy Spirit in their generation. As we sing, let's join our faith. Let's join our faith together with them that they will experience a measure of God like never before. Let there be an open heaven over all the image camps that they will have new visions, new dreams so that they will encounter signs, wonders and miracles. Hallelujah! That's why if you believe that, let's give a lot of big hands. But as we sing the chorus, let's join the youths and hunger for more of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Hallelujah. That's why why don't we just lift up our hands. Let's sing the chorus together right now. right this morning the Holy Spirit is doing a new work in our lives for some of us God is just healing us healing our hearts the broken areas in our lives whether you're young or you're old this morning the Holy Spirit has come 
it comes with a baptism of fire. It comes with a baptism of love to mend the broken areas, to burn away the barriers that stand between us and His love. For some of us, God is bringing healing. Healing not just in our hearts, but healing in our bodies. God is just doing a new work in us this morning. Maybe this morning you're like the father. The father who thought that all of the encounters that he had with God, they were all gone, forgotten, buried, dead. But this morning, I believe God wants to come and remind you of his goodness, to remind you of the victories. To remind you of the encounters, the promises that have spoken to you. This morning, in a moment's time, we're just going to sing the song one more time. But as we sing the song, why don't we just respond to the Lord? Why don't we just lift up our hands, lift up our hearts? Let there be a cry of human spirit. And tell the Lord, God, once again this morning, come. Mark me by your presence. God, come, revive my heart. Come, come and be so close to me this morning. God, set my heart on fire once again. That's why, why don't we just lift up our hands? Once again, let's sing this song. separation. This morning, church, we're going to pray for all of our youths. We, we're going to pray for all of our kids. They are our next generation. You know, one of the greatest challenges of our youth in this generation is in the area of mental wellness. Today, as we pray, let's pray that God will take away every spirit of heaviness in our church among the youths. Let's just pray that every depression must go in the name of Jesus. Every despair must go in the name of Jesus. So church, are you ready? Let's pray as if the lives of our youth depend on it. So at the count of three, let's pray strong in the spirit. One, two, three, let's pray for them this morning. Deliverance, better be signs one day. 
that's why I want to just send your love to him. Just to love you forever and ever. Holy Spirit, we love you. We love your presence. That's why I just send your love. Send your love to him. Father, we thank you for City Harvest Church. We thank you for your wonderful presence here this morning. Lord, we thank you for this spiritual atmosphere of the Holy Spirit here we have in our church. God, we thank you, God, that you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are a transgenerational God. So this morning, we join our hearts together with the youths to cry for more of you. Let there be a fresh baptism of fire. Let there be a fresh baptism of power. Let there be a fresh baptism of your love in our church. Build us up as your people. Why don't we just take a moment, let's just pray in the spirit. Build us up, oh God, this morning. Build us up. Shigiriyala ba la 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 la. Shigiriyala ba la la la. Be us up, O God. Be us up as your people. Shigiriyala la 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 la. That's right. Shigiriyala ba la 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 la. Be us up. Be us up, O God. Shigala la 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 la. Shigala la 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 la. Be us up as your people, O God, so that we can serve you in our generation. Mark us by your presence. Just like how you have marked Moses of all. Just like how you have marked the disciples. Mark us, O oh God, as a church by your presence. So we thank you. We give you all of our praise. We give you all of our worship. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all of God's people, give aloud. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Just like if you want to clap, let's give the Lord a big, big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Emerge youths, we want you to know that we love you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. We love you. We are proud of you. So be strong. Be of good courage. For the Lord, your God, is with you. Have a great time in your camps. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Can you please help me turn to your neighbors and tell them that you are marked by His presence. Amen. Have a blessed week ahead and we'll see you in church next week. Amen. God bless you.